All right, we're just firing up the Hudson oven this morning, uh, getting ready for a bake of probably 60, 70 loaves of country loaf sourdough. Uh, all we had to do was stack up some nice dry timber. In this case, it's ash, and we did a top-down burn. So we did three logs one way, three logs the next way as sort of a platform, and then we light the fire on the top, and it behaves kind of like a candle. Just think of it like a hardwood candle. Over time, it burns down from the top, and it's a little bit more of an efficient way to burn. It takes a little bit less attention to keep it uh, firing, and it's just a good way to heat a wood-fired oven. Um, so as you can see, the fire's already made its way to the bottom. We have really nice dry firewood here. And we're just gonna let it uh, start kicking. It's still a little bit smoky, uh, which means it's not burning super efficiently. Um, eventually, we're gonna put on our firing door, which is just creates a small amount of air, or lets, only lets a small amount of air get in. So it actually limits the amount of combustion that can go down. Um, and you're not basically just, you're not burning a rich fire. Think of it like a choke on a car or, or any sort of uh, other machine you might run, like a chainsaw or something. Um, it, it just limits the amount of oxygen. So basically you're just trying to control this fire throughout the day. Our main goal is to build up a nice bed of embers and coals. Um, and then you rake it out over the hearth and that gives it a really nice even heat throughout the dome and the hearth. Uh, you'll see right now we're at 150 degrees. Uh, it's been cooling for a week now since the last bake, uh, 150 degrees, and uh, we'll see in you know, a couple hours, we'll see what temperature we can get it up to. Once that needle starts moving, it doesn't want to stop, so it's a bit of a train, this thing. Anyway, we'll come back and check in on it in a couple hours. Hopefully it's less smoky. All right, here we are a couple hours later, and the needle hasn't moved too much. It's getting up close to 300, but as I said before, once it starts moving, it, uh, it really trucks along. So now we've got a pretty solid bed of coals. I threw in one load um, in between the last shot and this shot. Um, and I'm gonna put in one more stack of wood um, pretty quickly here. It's pretty darn hot in there, so you gotta be pretty quick with tossing wood in. Um, but once I load uh, the rest of this firewood in, all we have to do is take this firing door and set it in place. And the idea is now it's restricting airflow um, just enough so that you know combustion still occurs, but it reduces the amount so that way we don't get all the smoke going up and out the chimney, because uh, that's all that's all fuel that we want to burn. Um, the other way you can dampen the the firing process is actually close the flue, the exit as well when you reduce the um, the entrance. So anyway, in a couple more hours we'll come back and see what the temperature's at. Just wanted to get a shot of showing the chimney, and as you can see, after we've reduced the entrance and dampen the exit a little bit. We have a pretty fuel efficient burn here. We don't see a lot of black dark smoke coming out of the out of the chimney. So that means that we're combusting all of those gases that take a little bit of extra extra heat to combust. That's why when you see an open fire pit, um, it doesn't have a big closed environment, yeah, a nice closed environment for the, those gases to have a secondary combustion. Um, there's a lot of smoke. The other reason you see smoke sometimes is that it's actually just steam. Um, if you don't have nice dry firewood, uh, then you get a lot of steam coming out. So that's also a reason why you, why you see something that you might call smoke. So right now we have a pretty efficient burn and uh, yeah, we'll check back in a few hours. So the real idea behind this oven is that you're able to fire it over the course of a few hours via wood firing on the hearth that you're actually gonna bake on. And the stone and masonry, it's very thick walls. It has very thick walls and it's able to absorb that heat and it's able, able to retain that heat. The idea is that it doesn't just you know, zap out the walls. If it did, you know, the, my, the soles of my shoes would be melting as we speak. Um, so the idea is that it, it absorbs it and it retains it, and it's able to radiate that, that heat that it absorbs back into the bake chamber, which is actually where we're building the fire at the moment. Um, so eventually, at the end of all this, I'll sweep out the coals and I'll clean off the hearth and then I'll let it sit for another several hours. It's about 14 hours in total to heat this oven properly to bake in. And once we have a clean hearth, the next morning, with a nice, evenly heated, it basically gives it, give it, we give the oven overnight to equalize in temperature so there's not hot spots and cold spots. Um, that way you don't burn some loaves and, and others are, are underbaked. So we have a nice, evenly heated oven, and then we can bake in the, in the morning. Um, so it's about eight hours to heat, and it takes about another six to eight hours to equalize. Um, but after that process, you have heat for almost a full, almost an entire week you can cook in this thing. So our snack is just about uh, complete. Having a little popcorn before we do a final shaping on our breads. 
This oven is just about halfway into its uh, firing process. It's pretty much set for the rest of the day. We have a nice bed of coals in there and we're going to let it do a slow burn with this firing door in, on it. And that should get us to about 6 p.m. It's about 6.30 uh, p.m. and we started firing this morning at around 8 a.m. Um, and when we started firing we were at 200 degrees, 150, 200 degrees, and now we're up at about 850. So the uh, oven is properly heated. Um, we gave it enough time for that, uh, that masonry, that thermal mass to absorb enough heat from the, um, the wood fire that we had going in there all day. And now that we've let all the embers burn down to just a few, just a couple piles of, of coals, we're gonna sweep those out. I'm actually gonna throw them in the grill so we can cook up some dinner tonight. And, um, and then sweep out all the ash so we have a nice clean hearth to bake on in the a.m. So we're going to give this oven uh, ba basically just overnight, uh, probably another 10 hours or so to totally equalize. What we're going to do is shut the doors, close the flue, and uh, basically just let that, let that heat permeate through all the stone in an, in an equal manner. I guess I'll have to show you a couple finished loaves in the morning. So it's the next morning and this is the third round of 18 loaves that have been baked over the course of about two hours. Each batch taking a little over 30 minutes. I'm doing uh, pretty large loaves this week, so these are one kilo loaves. Look pretty good. Nice and dark. Still even on the third round. The oven has a lot more heat to give after our decent firing yesterday. Uh, the temperature is reading about, I think that says 720 degrees. That's pretty good, um, especially for after three rounds of baking, I don't know, a, a total of almost 200 pounds of dough. Uh, raw dough that's been refrigerated overnight and then thrown into a, that's cold dough thrown right onto the hearth, so that zaps a lot of heat out. So the beauty of this is that I can just keep baking all week, or cooking and baking all week in this oven after this midweek bake. Here's the last three. I'll give you a little sound check on the density. And, you know, we're just gonna listen to see if it's fully baked through. There's this. Here, see if you can listen. Sounds pretty done to me. All right, that's a wrap. Glad I got to show you some finished uh, baked country loaf sourdoughs by Hudson Oven. And stay tuned for more content. Thanks, cheers.